you think about the future, you listen to the news, and you just get a cold chill down your back, don't you? You wonder where are we headed? What is going to happen? Because it seems like we're in a downward spiral. And if it doesn't seem like that, I want to know where are you living? We are degenerating morally. Christianity is being marginalized. How are you and I to live in the light of it? We'll talk about it today. questions for you this week as we study Isaiah 28 and Isaiah 29. As we move into this new section of Isaiah, as we look at six woes, not six today, but six woes, I have two questions for you this week. The first question is, who are you trusting in? I mean, when that cold shiver goes down your back, where are you going to put your trust? Are you going to put your trust in the arm of flesh? Are you going to try and figure out how can I get out of this? What can I do? And you begin to manipulate and, and, and strive and, 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 and rush here and there trying to straighten it all out. Oh, beloved, God says rest. Don't be disturbed. There is a stone, a tested stone, a cornerstone that God has laid and established in Jerusalem, in Zion, and that's where your security is. You say, but that's hard for me to believe. Then you know what God says to you? He opens up Isaiah 28 with woe, woe, to you. And we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 28, but then the second question comes for Isaiah chapter 29. And that is, when you look at your life, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as the one that is in control of your destiny? The one who can, can manipulate and strive and achieve and, and all of this and shape your own life? Do you see yourself as the potter? Or do you see yourself as the clay in the hands of a divine potter? Now notice, I didn't say, do you just see yourself as clay? Because many people just say, okay, I'm clay. There's nothing I can do about it and everybody's shaping me. No, that's not it. But if you see yourself as clay in the hands of the divine potter, then what you are doing is you're saying, God, I know that you exist. I know that you see. I know that you know what's going on. And I know that you're in charge of the nations. And so God... I'm going to live in the palm of your hand and you can mold me and make me and shape me and use me for your honor and your glory in my generation. I'm here. I'm yours. So that's what we're all about. Now, we're going to see in Isaiah 29, he's going to say, woe to you, Ariel. Now, who is Ariel? Well, we're not going to touch that today, but what I want to do is I want to put you in the context of Isaiah. Why? Because it's important when we change from one segment to the next segment of the book that we get our act together and we remember the general segments, the general divisions of the book of Isaiah. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get out pencil and pen if you can. If not, download this, get the uh, uh, CD, get the DVD of the program and go over it again in your mind because you need to have this information. In Isaiah chapter 1, all the way through Isaiah chapter 12, God is talking to Judah 
and Jerusalem. He's talking to the southern kingdom. So get out the map either that you drew yesterday or get out the map that you have downloaded from your free study guide. That's preceptsforlife.com and you can download the study guide free and you have a lesson for every single day because I want you to learn how to discover truth for yourself. That's what Precepts for Life is all about. Discovering truth for yourself so that you know that you know that you know so that you can stand firm no matter what's going on around you and you are rooted and grounded and established in truth, knowing it, loving it, and willing to die for it if necessary because you know the end of the story. So Isaiah chapters 1 through 12, God is talking to Judah and Jerusalem. When you open up Isaiah, it is the vision which God gave to uh, Isaiah, the son of Amos, and it came in the days during the reign of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Now, in chapters 1 through 12, in 1 through 12, his message is to Judah and Jerusalem, but it pertains also to the northern kingdom that he many times refers to not only as Israel, but he refers to as Ephraim. In these first 12 chapters, what he is doing is he is telling how they are going through the motion of a religion, but they have turned their back on him. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are a people who are going into captivity because of a lack of knowledge. So he lays out before them their sins. And as he lays out their sins, before them. He is speaking to them and telling them how absolutely important it is that they trust him. So I picked one verse and it's from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 and it is a verse, uh, it is a word that God Almighty gives to King Ahaz. So let's review. In Isaiah chapter 6, <clears throat> Uzziah the king dies. Now they're living in a time of great prosperity when Uzziah rules over the southern kingdom and Jeroboam the second rules over the northern kingdom. So they're living in the lap of luxury. It's kind of like the United States of America today. Compared to most of the nations on the face of this earth, we live in the lap of luxury and people want to partake of that. And that's why many want to come into this country. Others want to come in because they want to establish an Islamic base in the United States of America. They come in speaking peace. Jihad is on their mind because they believe that the world should live under Sharia law and, 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 uh, and that Allah will rule and then you either convert to Islam or you die. And so they have a plan, as I told you in the last program. It was laid out in 1972, and it is a plan for every country of the world and how to introduce Islam into this country. All right, now, so what we have is in the days of Ahaz, Ephraim has teamed up with Aram, Aram of Damascus, because of the Assyrian threat. I mean, uh, they have teamed up together, and they want to come down, and they want to conquer the southern kingdom. So it's Ephraim, Samaria, the northern kingdom, teaming up with an adversary, Aram, and coming down and taking this kingdom. So Israel, Judah, has a chance now to either turn to God and rest in God or to turn to the arm of flesh. They can turn to Assyria for help or they can run down to Egypt for help. So in chapters 1 through 12, in chapter 7, God speaks to Ahaz, who is the king at that present time of the southern kingdom. Remember, it was in the days of Uzziah. In Isaiah 6, Uzziah 
dies, and then we don't hear anything about Jotham in the book of uh, Isaiah except for that first verse. And then we have Ahaz. Ahaz is king. God sends Isaiah down to talk to Ahaz. He brings along his son, Sheer Joshua. Sheer Joshua means a remnant will return. And he says, listen, don't worry about these firebrands. I'm going to wipe them out. You trust in me. And this is what he says in Isaiah 7, verse 9. And this is what I want you to see. If you will not believe, you will not be established. God's word to us today is this precious one. He is God. He is the sovereign ruler of all the universe. And you and I are to trust in him. The fear of man, the Bible says, brings a snare. It brings a tap a trap because we begin to look at another human being and we forget that God is God and he sits on his throne. So whatever circumstance you're in, God has allowed that circumstance in order to drive you into his arms where you can lay your head on his all-sufficient breast as El Shaddai and find peace and rest and quietness and confidence. That's what God wants. And believe me, I've been through incredible trials. I mean, it has been a year and a half that is just, it's just unbelievable. But I've made it and I've held it together in the strength of relying on the promises of God. And you can do the same too. All right, so that's chapters 1 through 12. All right, then we come to chapter 13 through chapter 23. And in this portion of Isaiah, what God shows us is he shows us that he is not just a small God that belongs to a certain culture and a certain part of the world, but he is God of the nations. And so he is going to mention in Isaiah chapter 13 and 14, he's going to talk about the destiny of Babylon, which really isn't a major power yet. He's going to talk about Tyre. He's going to talk about Damascus. He's going to talk about Ammon and Moab and Edom and Arabia. And he's going to talk about Egypt. And he's going to talk about Assyria because he wants us to understand, hey, I'm not a local deity. I am the God who was not over, only over uh, Judah and Jerusalem and Samaria, the northern kingdom, but I am the God of all the nations. And what does God have to tell us, the God who is the God of all the nations? You find it in Isaiah chapter 14, and this should give you great assurance. He says, as I have planned, so it will come to pass. And what I have purposed, no man can thwart. He is God. We'll talk about it more in just a minute. Now, let's continue our rehearsal, our review of the book of Isaiah. Chapters 1 to 12, he's talking to Jerusalem and Judah, and he's talking to the northern kingdom also, and he's telling them that they need to believe him, and if not, they will not be established. Well, you know the story. Ahaz does not believe in God. And so in Isaiah chapter 14, we have Ahaz dying. Now in Isaiah 13 through Isaiah 23, what we have is we have the second segment of Isaiah where God is speaking to the nations. I gave you this verse, but I want you to look it up for yourself in the Bible. And it is Isaiah chapter 14. In Isaiah chapter 14, it says in verse 24, the Lord of hosts 
has sworn, saying, Surely, just as I have intended and just as I have planned, so it will happen. So you and I need to know this, how foolish we are to think that we're the clay and that we can shape our own destiny when God tells us that he is the potter. We see that in uh, Isaiah chapter 29. But when God tells us that he is the potter, when God tells us that he is in charge, if you want rest, if you want quietness, if you want confidence, if you want strength, it's found by trusting in the Lord. And so he wants us to know that he is the God of the nations. Now, Assyria ruled from 900 to 686 BC. When was Isaiah written? Well, Isaiah was written, or Isaiah, I'm sorry, when was the time of Isaiah? Isaiah went from 739 to 681 BC. 739 to 681 BC. Now, what is going to happen? Well, in 722, during this reign, Assyria is going to come down and it's going to take the northern kingdom captive. That's what God tells Ahaz. He says in 65 years, they won't be anymore. So we can believe God. We can trust him. God said it. It came to pass. In 586 BC, in 586 BC, almost a hundred years later, the southern kingdom is going to be taken captive by Babylon. So in Isaiah 13 and 14, God takes us and he has us look at Babylon, but he has us look at Babylon all the way into the future. Now, what I want you to see is Isaiah prophesied to his time, 739 to 681 BC. Isaiah also was a prophet of the future. He prophesied about the future. So although Isaiah is, is uh, in 681 is, is gone off of the scene, Isaiah is going to see what's going to happen in 586 BC. And Isaiah is going to see what is going to happen when even Babylon is conquered by the Medes and the Persians. And we see that in the second part of, uh, of Isaiah. It's absolutely awesome. But this is what I want you to understand also. Isaiah not only prophesies about the future, but Isaiah prophesies to the future and tells them how they are to live. This is why this study, I know it's not easy. I know Isaiah is not easy. But I'm tackling it because Isaiah is for our day. Because Isaiah is going to show us how we are to live. Isaiah is going to tell us what the future holds so that I don't have to be worried and I can rest in the Lord. Isaiah is also going to tell them how to live during this future. And I need to know and you need to know the same thing, precious one. So I just want you to hang a thou in there with me, oh baby. Okay, I want you to understand this. Now, in Isaiah chapter 24 through chapter 27, we have the third segment of Isaiah. And the third segment shows us God is not only first segment over Judah and Jerusalem, Second segment, God is not only over the nations, but God who created the earth is over the earth and God is going to lay the earth waste. Why? Because the inhabitants of this earth have devastated, they have, they have uh, uh, not treated this earth properly. And I'm not talking about global warming and everything, but their sin has brought a curse upon this earth and, and the inhabitants of this earth have ruined this earth. So God is going to lay it waste. And we saw that in, this is all review now, we saw that 
in Isaiah chapter 24 through 27. He's going to lay the earth waste, but then he's going to establish his throne in Jerusalem and all the nations, even as he said in Isaiah 2 and other places, all the nations then will give obedience to God. So yes, he's going to destroy this earth, so to speak. He's going to bring judgment upon this whole world. What are you and I going to do? In confidence and quietness is our strength and he promises us peace. So let me give you the verse for this now, and I want you to go in Isaiah to, and let me, let me get the exact verse. It's Isaiah 26, verse 3. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. So that's the verse. Now we come to the fourth segment of Isaiah. The fourth segment goes from chapter 28 through chapter 33. And in chapter 28 through 33, what you have is you have six woes, six woes that are pronounced upon those who will not trust in the Lord. So what happens? In chapters 1 to 12, God talks to Judah and Jerusalem. In chapters 13 through chapter 23, he talks to the surrounding nations and he gives you the oracles regarding the surrounding nations. In chapters 24 through 27, he talks about the whole earth and what is going to happen. Then in chapter 28 through 33, he comes back here. He comes right back here to talk to Judah and Jerusalem. Why? Because they have this enemy, Assyria, up there. Now, there is a highway that comes from Mesopotamia right about 16 miles outside of the city of Samaria and goes on down to Egypt. And so the, uh, if, if Assyria wants Egypt, they're going to go through here and they are the enemy of Israel. And so he wants them to listen. He wants them to pay attention. So what does he tell us and what is the key verse of this segment? Well, I want to give it to you and it is chapter 30. It's verse 15. You ought to write it and put it on your refrigerator. For thus... The Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength. This is what the Lord God, Almighty God, the Holy One of Israel has said. In repentance, turning to Him, having a change of mind, and rest you will be saved. In quietness and and trust is your strength. And yet, some of them wouldn't believe. Are you going to believe? Are you going to trust Him? Oh, beloved, there's no other way to have peace and confidence than trusting in God. And what is your precept for life today? Well, let me put it in a negative way just to make a point. Woe be unto you if you do not trust in God. If you do not recognize that he is the potter and you are the clay in the potter's hand, woe be unto you, beloved. He has established a stone, a precious cornerstone in Zion. And we know from that scripture that it is pointing to Jesus Christ because Peter takes that verse from Isaiah and nails it in a sense to Jesus Christ. You and I have a Savior, a Savior uh, uh, that is the Son of God. And it's the Son of God that gives us access to the Father and brings us into the family and gives us perfect peace so that we can just absolutely, totally rest in Him. 
So my question to you today, beloved, is in whom are you resting? Who are you trusting? If you don't want woe in your life, but you want to be able to move, to go, to stand in confidence, then you've got to know God and you've got to believe God. And so the question is this, do you have the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one promised in Isaiah, the one born of a virgin, the son that is given, the child that is born. The government is upon his shoulders and he is wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father. Do you have that one inside of you? If not, you need to repent. You need to have a change of mind. You need to recognize that God says that there's only one way to him. Jesus said it. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. So if you want quietness, if you want confidence, if you want a place to rest, tell God you want his son as your savior. Tell him that you're a sinner and you confess those sins and you want to be saved from them. And he will hear and he will answer. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website at preceptsforlife.com. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life. In whom are you resting? Who are you trusting? If you don't want woe in your life, but you want to be able to move, to go, to stand in confidence, then you've got to know God and you've got to believe God. Join us for our next program as we discover more Precepts for Life.